Hey there, how you doing? This is Coach Chris Wilson with the Strong by Design podcast. And today we are talking about something that makes people uncomfortable. The inner thigh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> how you said that just made me feel really uncomfortable. I know. <laughs> I, I kind of did, did it on purpose because it's, it's one of those things. Um, yeah, it's, uh, so anyway, I'm sitting here with my, my good friend, co-host, Strength coach, neighbors, health expert, new neighbor. Just moved office. Moved into a new office. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, so, this is Brian Klepacki, and he is a uh, an expert when it comes to training a part of the body, such as the inner thighs. That actually a lot of people know very little about mm -hmm. uh, the adductor group. And so we're going to dive into a lot of interesting material about kind of fully training your your legs and and their the interaction between this part of the leg and your glutes and the, the relationship there and um, why this is such a certainly for the ladies out there this is a part of the body that's something that they really work hard at mm -hmm. and maybe not so sure how to get there uh, but they're they're busting their, their butts literally in the gym to try and reshape their thighs by targeting this area. Uh, so let, let's go into, I guess first, really briefly, what, what made you, uh, if you, if we go back several months, right, what made you think this is something we need to make? This is something we need to create. We need to talk more about this. Yeah, so prior to creating the inner thigh solution, we created Unlock Your Glutes. Right. Which is, beyond successful, not just from a business standpoint, but for a training standpoint, it gives results. So my background's in exercise sciences. Most of you already are aware of that. Uh, I've studied the human body for 15 plus years. I went to school for this stuff. It wasn't just like some online two-day two weekend course. So we actually studied the human body, how it responds to stress, how it responds to everything, you know, injury and things like that. And so that's why we created Unlock Your Glutes mm -hmm. initially, but, you know, B-U-T, but there's more to the glutes than just your glutes. You have the entire core pelvic region that is also responsible for, you know, motor, you know, motor recruitment, you know, muscular activation, performance, posture. I mean, there's so many things for the, your entire reproductive system. Yeah. But guess what? Is attached to the pelvis, your adductors. Your glutes are attached to the pelvis. So it, it kind of makes sense to, to you know, to, to target both of those. I mean, that's just common sense to me. And, and plus, because when we're talking about the legs, most people instantly think quadriceps and hamstrings. Right. And, and that's like, to them, that's the, that's that's the leg. Or that's lower body. Right. But really, the adductor group or the inner thigh muscles. Right. Are as large, if not larger, they are than, larger than the back here, than the hamstring yeah. group. Yeah. So which, a lot of people, yeah. it, I always call it the most neglected muscle group of the body. Yeah. It's because people don't, um, people just neglect it. Even strength coaches, even physical therapists, they don't look at the adductors as a main culprit for weak glutes or even lower back pain. Mm -hmm. But if you study the human body and how it operates, a lot of tightness and a lot of power and uh, integrity of the spine starts from the pelvis. And of course, since you're by default, people are training their quads, training their hamstrings. Now, all of a sudden they're training the glutes, but what about, what about your adductors? They're still neglected because people just say, Oh, I'm, I'm hitting them on leg right. press or That's I'm hitting right. them on squats. I'm hitting right. them on hip thrust. Right. But if you dissect the movement, the adductors are pretty much a secondary muscle group barely being used in those movements. So that's how we created uh, Inner Thigh Solution is just knowing that people are not training them properly. And again, I, I've been a strength coach for, I don't know, 15, 16 years now, certified through a functional movement specialist, um, or excuse me, functional movement systems. And I love uh, preventing injury. I mean, if, yeah. if you're injured, you can't do anything. I don't care if you're 90 years old or nine years old. If you're injured, you're sidelined. And once you're sidelined, you're out of your sport, you're going to start seeing some atrophy, you're going to start... You're, mentally you're going to start seeing um you know just a depression i mean it, it's very simple it's common sense kind of stuff but if you're if you're out of the game you're at 
to a strength coach, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Right. So my number one goal is for in injury prevention. Yeah, and, and, and large in part due to an imbalance. Right. It is where a lot of injuries happen, right? Absolutely. It's overly strong over here and underdeveloped over here. Neglected. And yeah. Neglected, and then boom, you have this crazy imbalance. And, and a lot of people take their, <laughs> it, you know, obviously it's always good to, to share your your background to establish m more credibility you know because and, you know in the world we live in today the social media world right where mm -hmm. there's an absolute abundance of experts who look great you know convincing with their images of themselves and stuff and all their glamour shots but really what where's their background you know maybe they're just obviously genetically gifted they eat really well or if it works for them it works if, for if everybody it works for them it works for everybody and so they you know they're quick to give advice and uh, people just take it because wow they look that like that they, yeah, they, they, they definitely like that, know what they they're know doing what they're talking yeah. about yeah so there there's a misunderstanding there right there's a divide mm -hmm. between w what should be part of your routine, uh, the, the, the movements and, and stuff. And, and that's really where this, this program starts to incorporate uh, some of these uh, movements that aren't necessarily, you know, oh, yeah, right. a no-brainer move, you know, something that's mm -hmm. implemented into your, your training. So uh, t talk about real quickly maybe the, uh, the, the said principle because um, it, it's, it's obviously something that's really, really important and directly relates to the, the content that we're talking about right now. The, so tell them first what it is and, and maybe its its importance. Yeah, so the SAID principle, S-A-I-D, uh, I'm gonna draw in a blank here, Specif specificity adaptations yes. to impose demands. Yeah, I knew you'd there get it. There we go. Yeah. It's been a little <laughs> while. Um, I mean, it's one of the first things you'll learn in like biomechanics or yeah. uh, anatomy and physiology. So what that means is the set principle is that if you target a specific muscle group or a, a muscle or a specific training style, the adaptations are going to be that of which you train. So if you do bicep curls, the biceps are being trained. If you train glutes through the hip thrust, I mean, that's it's something's going to happen to the glutes. Right. So that's what specificity or the set principle is, is pretty much you do something in one muscle and something right. else is going to happen right. to that particular Versus body. I'll just do a lot of squats, a lot of lunges, a lot of this, a lot of right. that. And then indirectly, you know, right. hopefully my adductors or my thighs will, will take on right. the, the look I want them to have. And the same thing happened when we talked a few weeks ago about glutes. People train the glutes by, they think, by doing lunges, by doing squats, by doing deadlifts, by doing all these leg exercises. Right. But the, the glutes are not legs. Right. They're the glutes. So people say, oh, I've got, I'm, I'm doing my glutes. Like, mm -hmm. no, you're not. You're doing legs. Right. Quads, it's like, hamstrings. It's like doing squats to train your calves. It's like, well, okay, your calves help. They're, they're going to help, but right. you're not getting to the actual yeah. the actual muscle group. Right. So inner thighs are one of those neglected muscle groups because mm -hmm. people think, oh, well, I, I guess I'm doing my th inner thighs by doing the, these you know, these particular movements. Yeah. But from a physiological standpoint, you're not. They're still going to be used, of course, but they're not being specifically targeted. Yeah. And and so people really understand where we're coming from. Uh, when you talk about inner thighs and adductors and adduction and stuff like that, go into a little, maybe a little bit more detail sure. about what those movements look like. Yeah. So uh, adduction, ADD, mm -hmm. uction, that's, that's what we were taught in school, uh, is bringing anything back to the midline of the body. It can be your arm, it could be your leg. Just just think, um, I don't even, it's hard to explain because it's it's one of those movements that is just very unique. So you're standing tall, you take your legs, swing it out, out to the side, not front, not back, mm -hmm. not up. Out to like nine o'clock. Yeah, you're just three, swinging, yeah. or yeah, just swinging it straight out mm -hmm. to the side, mm -hmm. like a jumping jack, like right. the lower half of a jumping jack, mm -hmm. or even the arms too. Right. The arm or the leg goes away from the midline of the body. Going away is abduction, abduction, where adduction is you're bringing that limb back to the center of the body. Right. So in this day and age, that particular movement or that plane of motion is rarely used. We're always a 
forward, back, or an up and down movement. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, we're not even talking about rotation here. We're just talking about just right. lateral movement, stepping sideways. I mean, unless you're you know, a soccer player, tennis player, yeah. you know, baseball player, a shortstop, something like that, adduction or even abduction, AB and adduction, rarely happens. Yeah. So much of our movement in, in in the every kind of everyday life you is sit up, is, sit down. Is, is vertical, up and down, yeah. or front or forward yeah. and backward. Walk forward, yeah. You, even backwards, people really well. Walk they, yeah, backwards. you're right. <laughs> but even more neglected would be your rotational movements and mm -hmm. your lateral movements, right. and that's what makes you know certain athletes. Why do they have such great physiques, you know, like a, like a running back, say, or a cornerback in football? Right. Because they have to train all planes of motion, all planes of motion like that, and their their bodies are so so balanced, mm -hmm. right? And you know, and, and their physiques are so complementary. You know, everything is hit and, and 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 aesthetically pleasing too. You know, so they're not overdeveloped in one particular part of the body. So that's. Yes. That's what we're trying to, what you were right. trying to accomplish so, with this. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, now you're probably asking like, all right, Brian, get to the point of how, <laughs> how do the, you know, how do the adductors affect other movements or other parts of the body? Yeah. Well, it's funny. We, we were just making some videos and I was reading and stuff like that uh, a couple of weeks ago, even in making the inner thigh solution. I said, this is, this is going to change the game for glute development. So as we were talking abduction is bringing the limb, let's talk about the leg, the leg away from the midline of the body. But that particular muscle that is responsible for that is your glute medius. That's its primary function of the glute medius is to bring the leg away from the midline of the body. Mm -hmm. So that's the antagonistic mover of adduction or the adductors. So the glute brings the leg away, the adductors bring the leg back. So it's kind of like a bicep tricep. That's right. They're both within the same movement. They just have different functions. Right. And no one trains just bicep and neglects their triceps right. or vice versa. But everybody's starting to train their glutes. So mm -hmm. wouldn't it make sense to have a healthy pull and a healthy push mm -hmm. of that particular muscle mm -hmm. or that particular limb of the body? Yeah. So if you're training your glute medius, it only makes sense to train your adductors. And when I say adductors, I'm talking all five muscles in there because it's... As far as I know, you can't just train one specific muscle of the adductor group. I know physical therapists and maybe some chiropractors will argue with me, but for a general population, you know, you're going to train all five muscles of the adductor group just by bringing the leg back to the midline of the body. So that's uh, pretty important. So uh, yeah. that that that, <laughs> that relationship there between the glutes and the adductors, and people spend so much time focused on their glutes. And trying to because it's obviously it's more of a, I think people, most people are trying to do glute based movement mm -hmm. to better develop them. So it's more of an aesthetics thing. How right. my butts, how my butt looks, not necessarily how it performs. But there are obviously the performance people out there too. And your your glutes being like the strongest part of your body. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> you know, your glutes are the are the main driver and powerhouse of the body. Right, the powerhouse of the body. So now, so you're kind of going after the the adductors with a lot of different types of activity right mm -hmm. so you got muscle activation stuff right you got dynamic stretching mm -hmm. you have multi-dimensional stabilizing mobility drills and then strengthening and sculpting exercises mm -hmm. and it's just so this this it's program the <laughs> yeah and that's so it's putting all of that together right into a routine that's done obviously a few times a week or whatever right. Uh, mixed in with whatever your current training regimen is, um, and they can they can do these movements body weight and with resistance because mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of people that they don't want a lot of equipment they right. don't want a lot of I don't have a, a gym membership I like to just do stuff out of my house or whatever so the, the, this program can work for them absolutely yeah because I know that's I mean there's just a lot of people that they when it comes to certain movements like this, certain exercises like this, they want simplicity and they want they want it to be effective, but they don't want to get involved in this right. apparatus and this machine and this complicated thing and, and, and all this. They just want so this program. The basics. Yeah. But even though the basics are exactly what you need, it's everything yeah. you need and nothing more. 
A lot of people think, oh, I need to spend two hours in the gym doing this. Yeah. That's, that's false. Yeah. I mean, if, if you actually read science, which a lot of people just skip over, you, you, you and I'm, I'm, I'm talking myself here, yeah. you don't need to spend that much time in the gym. You can do probably just amount the same amount of good at home mm-hmm. in a fraction of the time, yeah. body weight. Yeah. And that's, it's, um, it's not my opinion. It's yeah. research has proven that yeah. for decades. Yeah. And the more, and the more people I've talked to and just from personal experience and then other experts, other people that have been training hard at a high level for years and years, their most productive workout sessions are typically under an hour long. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're, there's an intensity there, meaning, and it, not in terms of intensity, like, rawr, you know, like, like right in, in, the past in, out, in, yeah. ter- in terms of they're making very good use of their time, their Efficiency. time. Yeah. They're very efficient in their workouts. Their rest periods are very short. And they're going back to that said principle. Yes. They're doing exactly what they need mm-hmm. to do for that muscle group. Right. Yeah. Because if you are really targeting an area of the body and giving it like uh, all out effort with really good form and, and, you know, good, good technique and everything else. It does not take long to have an impact on that area. And if, as long as there's frequency there mm-hmm. and consistency, you're going to, you're going to get the desired results. It just, looks, I love, I love where we're going with this. The, and I love how the human body works. It's just so fascinating. It, 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 it we're, we're created and designed in a, such a, a unique way that everything in the body it is 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 as one unit. Yeah. So if you uh, target your adductors, it's not just your adductors that are going to get developed. It's you're you're protecting your spine. You're helping just basic locomotion, walking, standing, climbing. Right. All of that's going to be balanced. Deeply impacted. It, 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 you know, side effect of you know being more just balanced. It's you yeah. know that song when you know the, the foot bones connected to the knee bone, yeah. the knee mm-hmm. bone. I mean, that's so true. It's the whole kinetic chain. If you do something on the lower body, it will affect your upper body. Same thing. If you start working on your shoulders, you loosen up your shoulders. There's a good chance your knees are going to start feeling better. It's just how we're created, how yeah. everything is interwoven and right. connected. Well, like if you have an ankle injury or something that's causing you to walk a certain way, that's going to impact your knee it's stability and your hip right. stability or vice versa. It could versa. be a shoulder issue. It could be an yeah. elbow issue. Yeah. It's, people look at things through a microscope rather than you know binoculars. Or no, not binoculars. Uh, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> What's the, uh, you said yeah. you said binoculars and microscope. I know. So, <laughs> so anyways, stop looking through a microscope. That's what I'm saying. And if you're really in the space, get a telescope. telescope. So, there we go. Whatever. <laughs> if you um, want to look at something, uh, yeah, uh, I, I know exactly yeah, where you're going. I don't know. I forgot. What, but the whole idea is that if you have lower back pain, if you have shoulder yeah, pain, right, there is a there is a good chance. It's not coming from that no, particular It's area. emanating from something else. And yeah. I've even, a lot of my clients, I've even said, you know, they say, oh, somebody told me I need to strengthen my core. Well, what's your core? Define your core. They're like, oh, just my, my abs, my six pack. You know, it's like, all right, okay, stop looking through Instagram. Stop checking out these YouTube videos. Stop reading these bogus magazines. Your core is so much more than just your six pack. I even say your adductors are part of your core because it attaches to your pelvis. Yeah. So think about it. If, you're, if your adductors are extremely tight, which most people's are, unless you train them, you're, it's going to shift your pelvis. Your pelvis is responsible for what? Posture. If your pelvis is tilted, even forward a couple of degrees, sideways a couple of degrees, back, one side could be more dominant than the other. Mm-hmm. You could have bony protrusions. I mean, there's so much that could go wrong in your yeah. pelvis. Yeah. And if you've had kids, there's a good chance your pelvis is not in a good proper alignment so what does that affect it affects all the musculature attached to the pelvis Mm -hmm. which is your lower back which is your your abdominal muscles your pelvic floor so if one part of your pelvis is shifted everything else is going to be shifted and much like most people we most people today we sit too much and we have dormant muscles through Mm -hmm. our hip area so dormant glutes Probably do- some dormant adductors going oh, on too, you know, because we just we're just not nearly as active as we once were as right. as a culture. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's there's people in other parts of the world that probably don't have a problem with dormant glutes or dormant adductors right. because 
the nature of their their, the their culture yeah. or their their environment they're walking they're vertical all day they're long laterally yeah, yeah yeah they're just they're doing all this stuff that we have to kind of um, manufacture mm-hmm. and and we talk about that i've brought that up in previous podcasts where you know when we're exercising we're getting physical uh in the gym or or at our home or outside with our with our children uh, obviously, there's a play there, with, when it comes to the kids and stuff. There's that element of play, mm-hmm. which is great because now you've merged fun with a- exercise right. or fun with activity. But a lot of times, just the the the, the nature of exercise as as an adult mm-hmm. is it can be fun, but it's something that we have to we have to manufacture this stress, healthy stress on our right. body in order to kind of prevent this this sedentary lifestyle yeah. right you know because we spend so much time sitting and just being you know com- sit. comfortable yeah. that we have to at least put our body through an hour or so of stress physical stress and but we have to use that physical that time wisely right we end up so many of us and i was no different there was a period of time where i was so set in just like this land of bodybuilding mm-hmm. And what happened was I lost some athleticism. I lost, yeah, I mean, I, I was good with certain lifts because I was doing those routinely. But then all of a sudden I started trying to do like some of this more athletic like right. drills with flipping tires and stuff like that. And that stuff was like, ooh, this is hard. This is like a whole new world. Well, yeah, it's more real world strength, right. you know, versus just what I call gym well, you're strength. you're tapping into yeah. certain systems of the body that right. have been neglected. Right, and, that, and that's what's so great about stuff like this. I, I, I want to, so talk to me, because I know someone listening is probably thinking the term thigh gap, <laughs> and I know it's like I not hate, a hate non-scientific that. term. I, I, that's, but, a, that's what I call an Instagram term. It's an Instagram term. Um, or a YouTube term. So sh- just share with me your thoughts about somebody that, you know, wants that look, right? Wants more of that appeal when right. it comes to the, the way their that region of the body looks. Like, right. what, what would you tell them? All right, so uh, if you've got kids listening to this, just plug the ears for a minute because I'm going to explain what thigh gap is okay. as clean as possible. Okay. So thigh gap is a... It's a gap on the very upper part of your thighs. Yes. So in other words, your upper thigh, pretty close to your pelvic pelvic region, right. does not touch. Hence the name thigh gap. Right. It's, it almost kind of creates like a diamond or heart di- shape, yeah, right? People call it yeah. a triangle, upside down yeah. triangle, a heart, yeah. a diamond. Right. Whatever you want to call it, there's a gap there. Now, my professional opinion is that this is mostly attributed to genetics. It's all about hip structure. Mm-hmm. We've all heard of the, well, me, strength coach speaking again, the term Q angle. That's when your your hip bone, or excuse me, your upper leg bone, your femur is attached to the pelvis, in, inside the pelvic region. The Q angle is where how the femurs are angled in, mm-hmm. creating the letter Q on both sides. Gotcha. The wider the hips, the more extreme your Q angle is, mm-hmm. that's gonna produce a more pronounced thigh gap. If you have a, a more traditional um, upright cue where it's, you know, the head of the femur, how it inserts into the pelvis with your femurs more vert- vertical or perpendicular to the floor, right. your thigh gap will not be as pronounced. Right. Obviously, the more weight you carry, the, the more fat you have on your thighs, it's going to eliminate that. Right. So there is some, you know, non-genetic uh, sure. disposition that you can manipulate purely nu- a nutritional thing but. yeah but even still i mean there has been I, i've worked with many women that are lean they're thin they're yeah. muscular yeah. muscular but they don't have a thigh gap right and even on the other hand there's overweight women that have a thigh gap so i mean it's it's not a scientific you know you don't need a scientific study to look at it but genetics has a huge part in, to play with the thigh gap so if you are in search of a thigh gap or really striving your hardest to get a thigh gap, I don't want to crush your, dream, crush your dreams, but there's a good chance if you don't have it now, you're, there's a good chance you're not going to ever get it. Now, yeah. don't let, I mean, there's always going to be exceptions. There's always going to be certain training that you can do. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to more of a genetic, it's a genetics thing. Yeah. And so where can they find uh, more information 
uh, kind of about everything that we've discussed when it comes to inner thigh solution. Yeah, so simple. Um, the most direct way to get it is innerthighsolution.com. Okay. Very simple. Um, but we also have some inner thigh videos on YouTube that uh, yeah. talk more about this, the, the program, but also just in inner thighs in general, and it'll, it can lead you to uh, learning more about the program itself. So they just go youtube.com forward slash critical bench and just type in. I mean, geez, you can just go to YouTube and type in inner thigh critical bench and you'll probably yeah. get or a adductor. host or adductor yeah, exercises. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we, we currently still doing one video per day over five years now. We have a database of almost, what, 3,000 videos between the I think so. two channels. Well, yeah, actually, if they want to check out our other the compound, yeah, the compound, which is youtube.com forward slash gym exercises. Right. And uh, you have access to even more video content. So it's kind of like our, that's kind of like our um, overflow, our overflow, let's call it channel, meaning sometimes we need to upload a, a lot of videos in a short period of time when it comes to maybe a particular program. There's some good content on there. Yeah, there is. There's some really good content on there. And so we needed a second, a backup channel to, to host uh, video content. It just made sense to do that. So um Oh, it's fantastic information, and uh, obviously anyone who wants something uh, to, to benefit their glutes too who are listening, just knowing the relationship there between the adductors mm -hmm. and the glutes, they can check out criticalbench.com uh, forward slash glutes, or even easier, they just text the word glutes to 345-345, and, and you Sweet. get instant access to the that, uh, five minute glute workout uh, report, which is great. So again, just text. Uh, the word glutes to 345 345 and you can get that free report right away we might end up having to make a uh, inner thigh free report at this point why not yeah that sounds like a good idea yeah i think so so if if you're listening um and if you have purchased unlock your glutes but you're kind of on the fence about mm. inner thigh solution both yeah. of these programs uh, first they're created by myself so right. i know exactly what is in each program and these programs work together you can easily use one mm -hmm. uh, at you know in addition to the other. Absolutely, it's not they're not two standalone programs. I mean, yeah, they you can do them individually, sure, but they they complement each other very well because like we talked this entire time, inner thighs are inner thighs, glutes are glutes. So if you train with that approach, there's never going to be a crossover. So if you're wondering if you should incorporate inner thigh solution into your glutes routine, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a leg day. Why not make a glutes inner thigh day? And then your next leg day, quote unquote leg day, is mm -hmm. quads and hamstrings. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's good information. And uh, I've obviously seen it in, in person. We've implemented a lot of these movements kind of into our our training out there. And it, I think the end result is people just, they, A, they want to feel better. Mm -hmm. B, they want to look better. And you know, C, they just want to feel more balanced. Confidence, and, yeah. And, and yeah, and which leads to just that self-esteem and confidence and everything else. And and as we grow, as we grow older, it only becomes harder and harder to hold on to these things. So you're best off <laughs> get on get on the uh, get involved now in doing stuff that's more meaningful. That's going to really round out your your it workouts and make your time. body yeah more whole. It's yeah, so quick. It I is mean, so quick. It, it, it's unbelievable. You know, I I keep pushing into people like you don't have to do much you just have to do something yeah if you want something to change you don't have to do a lot you don't have to break the bank you don't have to you know wake up early you don't i mean there's so many i call them hacks but i i, I use that term loosely just because it has a lot of controversy sure. surrounding it but exercise is simple just do what you need to do <laughs> and then things it, are going to yeah. happen. And it can take just 10 to 20 minutes. I mean, some That's of it. our best workouts here have been really short, but they're very much, we know exactly right. what we're going to do. It's and we set and, principle. And we do it with very little rest periods in between right. and just hammer it out. And we're just, boom, you're yeah. done. You're done before you even know it. And right. super effective. So thank you so much for, for listening. We It's always a, a pleasure to have Brian here to, to share his uh, his thoughts and his experience. And, uh, and it's great. And we'll do it again. And thank you for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. We'll talk to you real soon.